Hi folks, welcome back. So I've got this little GPS DO here that I, I picked up, a, I guess a, a week or two ago. And uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it, uh, just checking out some of the uh, other time references I have around here or even tuning them a little bit and get them to more closely match this. I mean, the, the specifications on this are, are, are pretty good. I mean, it, it's supposed to be, uh, you know, over, uh, you know, between 100 and 1,000 seconds of, of time, it's supposed to be accurate to within 10 to the minus 11. Uh, it's pretty phenomenal. I, I don't know if it actually is that. I've got no way of checking it, but uh, I do understand how the thing works, and it, it shouldn't be that far off, that figure, if, it, if indeed it is working. And it does seem to be working. I'll show you that in a minute. But in the meantime, I wanted to take it apart and have a little look inside it. So I'll, let me get out my, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take these nuts off here and then I'm going to unscrew these four screws and just slide the unit out and then we can have a look and see what's inside this thing. Yeah, let's get a pliers. I don't have a nut driver that big, but we can use a, a big ugly pliers to get those started. That's uh, we kept those uh, bits of hardware into something so they don't get lost. And then I'm gonna pull these screws out here. I've got uh, I've got um, a couple of uh, BNC connectors here. To pick up the outputs from it as well. Well, once we get out, I'm gonna hook it all up. I've also got this uh, uh, makeshift serial um, connection here, the power and the antenna, which is it's really just thrown up in that filthy window ledge up there. Uh, I haven't taken any real uh, measures to make sure it sees anything other than the trees out in the backyard there, um, but it, it seems to work quite effectively nonetheless. And we'll show you that once we get the once we get the thing apart turned on. But let's have a quick look around it first. I wish I had a little bit more zoom available to me on my camera, but unfortunately I don't. So I've got to. All right, so. In theory, this should just pull right out. Oh, but here it comes. Okay, here we go. Right. Oh, wow. It uh, looks. There's not a lot to it, is there? So let's let's see. Yeah, it's not not a heck of a lot to this. Give me a, a second, and I'm going to I'm going to look, put this under a microscope, and I'm going to look at some of these parts here, and I'll look them up online, and I'll. I'll come right back and uh, I'll let you know what everything is. Okay, so yeah. So what we have here is we have a U-Blox GPS receiver. It's a Neo-7M. They're supposed to be a pretty nicely uh, specced units. Uh, but I imagine, you know, just looking at the condition of this um, and the condition of the oscillator here, these look like they're, they're reclaimed items or, or surplus items. Um, I'm more likely reclaimed rather than surplus. But uh, so what we have here, right next to the U blocks here, is uh, we've got here and here and then down here. We, these are SN74LV2G02 dual inverters. I imagine these two down here are used to drive that uh, one pulse per second output. So it should have a nice, fast rising edge. They're, they're pretty fast uh, inverters there. And uh, we've got a co another couple of them up here as well. Um, this thing here is a 3.3 volt regulator. And uh, so is this here. And what else do we got? 
Yeah, this here's a, a good old LM358 operational amplifier. It might just have something to do with driving the, the serial port, because that uh, seems to be located right there. That's the serial port connector right there. And over here we have just a, an NS9014 transistor. And this one right here, it's got a National Semiconductor emblem on it. It's got 2575 written on it. But if it's a, an LM2575 um, regulator, it's in a different package than what National or even Texas Instruments list. Um, but it, it looks to me like it is there as a switch mode regulator. It's got the coil and everything on it. And uh, we do have the voltages coming out here that uh, drive some of the components are coming off that area as well. So it, my best guess is that's what it is. This is a, an Atmega 8A microcontroller here. And I imagine that is interfacing with the, the oscillator um, to control the voltage on it. And uh, this here is a Altera EM3064 CPLD. I would guess that that's interpreting the signals coming from the GPS receiver. And here we have a, uh, this is a 511 MLF um, clock generator, probably just generating the clock to drive the CPLD. And this is a, a 5 volt LDO regulator here. And that's, that's about it. That's all she wrote on, on that side. And then here we have a OCXO. Uh, this is a 12 volt CTI job. And it looks like if you look on this side here, you, you can see also they have um, the pattern here for one of the, the 5 volt kind, like this one here that died. So if you look there, it's got the very same pattern and it just fits in right there. So let, let's hook this thing up. Let's see, uh, let's see it working, powering the thing up. Okay, so let's uh, get this BNC on here. Get this one here. I'm using two different scopes on this. I want to trigger off both the sine wave coming out of it and off the one pulse per second. Yeah, get that out of the way. We'll plug in our serial port here. Attach our antenna. It won't work without that at all. And now we'll attach the power. Let's see how long it takes for the thing to settle in. And Okay, so we've got this red LED and the green LED are on. I think the green LED just tells you that the power on. The red LED is telling you that it's not within spec yet. So the specifications are for short term and for long term, 10 to the minus 11 or one part per 100 billion. All right, so it's still coming to grips with itself. The red light's not off yet. Up here, you should be able to see the one pulse per second coming out of it. Right here is the 10 megahertz. And that visual GPS view, and uh, as, it, as it settles in and starts to track satellites, you should see those satellites coming up over there. You give it a second here, and we'll come back uh, when it finally locks in. Okay. So here we are. I took it. Uh, I took it about ten minutes or so to get enough uh, satellites acquired and start tracking them. But uh, now it's 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 tracking three, and that's good enough to uh, get, at least get the one pulse per second going. As you can see, the red light is still on here. It's not locked in yet. Now you can see over here this LED is blinking. So that's the. Uh, basically your one pulse per second as well. You can see it up there on the scope. And it's a, a really nice sharp edge on that. We have um, rise time of one nanosecond. So that's a, that's a pretty clean pulse. Now I think it's about it's 100 milliseconds. And how are we doing on satellites now? Yeah, we're tracking six. Still got the red light on though. Oh, the red light just went out. Okay, so there we are. So now we're up to operating temperature and uh, we're acquiring enough satellites for the thing to properly discipline the oscillator. And it's now running within spec, which means short term, less than uh, point, point 0.1 hertz. Uh, so that's one part in, in 100 million. And then um, over, like I said, over a period of about 1,000 seconds or so, it should be down to 10 to the minus 11, um, which would be one part in, in 100 billion.
for for something that costs a hundred dollars on eBay. It's just it's amazing. But that's it. So, okay, that's a look at inside the little GPS Do. It's a great little thing, and a great little price. Thanks for joining me, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.